And with that, this hearing is adjourned. Good morning, and welcome to the New York City Hybrid Hearing on the Committee on Mental Health, Disability, and Addiction. Please silent all electronic devices. Thank you for your kind cooperation. Chair, we are ready to begin. Any individuals with lived experience who have taken the time to join us today, we look forward to hearing from you. At this point during the hearing, a woman came into the council chambers who was complaining about her health and medicine that she hadn't received. Uh, it wasn't co quite clear to me how she came in and, and why, but this is what she was asking uh, council members to provide for her. And she spoke to the head of the uh, health commission there and they gave her some water. They said she would get health care, and she was uh, escorted out. I spoke to uh, Ms. Lowen uh, back Lohan. in... It appears to me that there is somewhat of a deliberate attempt on, on the part of the, in the city and the state government to further what I believe to be initiating more bad policy for the good of the whole. Mayor Adams signed new legislation today to protect victims of domestic violence. This new law expands the definition of domestic violence. It now includes economic abuse. The law aims to ensure victims are not discriminated against based on their economic standing. The reason why I'm saying that is because listening to everyone speak today, I couldn't help but just think about all that's happened to me per personally, and I know that I'm not the only person that has been affected by what's happened in terms of policy in the city, in the state, throughout the whole country. Um, I guess what I need to say succinctly is that uh, the efforts that are being made to resolve many of the problems that seem to be uh, currently existing are, are fine and well. Um, but I have to say that they should make haste with policy. Haste meaning I've been testifying here since 2016 and it is now 2023. Um, in my opinion, the city is falling short on policy, falling short on advocacy for the homeless and for the mentally ill. Um, and I would like to see the mayor and the governor provide better answers and better solutions than the ones that I've heard today. The trauma that I've ex experienced as a homeless person is something that can never be reversed. It's something that will follow me until the, the day that I die. And with all due respect to the people that are trying to make change here, there isn't very much more that they're gonna be able to do to stop the fact that I've experienced homelessness in the way that I have. Blaming it on the government or blaming it on, on bureaucratic issues won't get me anywhere because it's already happened. And just like many other individuals, now we have to face the challenges uh, of living in the present and going into the future. And how are we going to live our lives until the day that we die? Um, I don't mean to sound dogmatic or, or completely cynical, but it just seems that um, personally, the rights of the individual have been infringed upon to, to the degree where 
the individual no longer feels like a human being, no, no longer feels like themselves. Um, they've been robbed of their humanity. And I know that the efforts of the people here are good and well, but I haven't heard a single testimonial or legislation that's being passed that truly addresses the fact that this has happened to someone. I know I don't have enough time here to, to speak fully. If I did, I could make a very convincing testimonial that might help in, in the data, meaning the services that I've received, the doctors that I've seen, um, all, all the efforts I've done on my own to actually try to receive help. And uh, to be honest with you, um, I felt like it's fallen short. I've discussed this with you before. Um, my present circumstance always seems to be a dire one, and despite the efforts that I've made to personally to make things get better, it seems that there's a stagnation that continues to happen, and it continues to affect me. The gentleman that was killed uh, by the two persons the other day, to me, is uh, partly a, 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 a justification of, of, of that. Um, and it seems to be a really sorry uh, state, of, state of affairs. Um, I myself have been the, the victim of, um, of violence on, on the subway. Uh, luckily, uh, no one has you know, tried to take my life away from me, but I've had my belongings taken from me. I've had people uh, uh, engage in physical violence against me simply because they saw me as a homeless man on the street uh, with no, with no, um, it seems like they didn't, they didn't even care that I was an individual, that I was a person, that I had a, I had a job, that I had a family, I had a wife, et cetera. I had a life before I became a homeless person. And the very fact that they saw me as a homeless person seemed to give them the feeling that I was uh, not a human being anymore. Uh, this person who was uh, a victim of this, of this crime from what I read, he said that he hadn't eaten, he didn't care if he could live anymore, he was in a manic state of, uh, of thinking, and uh, his behavior, acting out as, say, projecting, uh, caused the people to come and, and behave the way that they did towards him. Uh, personally, I don't think it's justifiable. I've been in situations where other homeless people have actually tried to attack me or, or have attacked me. And the only thing I thought was to get away from them. I didn't think that I wanted to, to kill them. Uh, so what I'm just trying to address is, is I think that there, there needs to be a more concerted effort uh, on the part of these agencies to, to help people. And I hope that uh, that's something that happens. Thank you, Richard. Um, and I know you and I, have, you and I have spoken before, and um, thank you both for coming here to testify and sharing your personal stories. And um, you know, it's just a reminder that this is, you know, as as you just said, we have to remember the humanity and all of this, and that, and and to treat and respond to people as people. So, um, I just want to thank you both for taking the time and waiting, and um, for your testimony. So, thank you so much. And you come on. Of what or whom? The unknown. It is defined as not known, not within the range of one's knowledge, experience, or understanding, strange, unfamiliar. Not discovered, explored, identified, or ascertained, the unknown areas or specificity of some place or something. Not widely known, not famous, obscure.
Why do the BRC staff and security engage in 1. Rape, 2. Abuse, 3. Harassment, 4. Fraud, 5. Physical violence, 6. Mental violence, 7. Discrimination, 8. Racism, 9. Jealousy. Why are the city shelters so violent? Le CHRI sacra 20 forces sexuelles intercourse, somme team toté point off assume un self indulgent or violent characté. Lust, or a deuxième forte et flèche off à noter, is considéré à sain, or a purac. Most of t'es le chrou poplar faible en noable to contre l'inter of n'desir. Et rare fameuse occurrence of le CHRI 1 history. 1, Adam le F2, T serpent 3, Slaverie 4, Prostitution 5, Oscar, Ville de 6, Rimbaud Verlaine. Are you paranoid? Are you schizophrenic? In the years and decades to come, many people currently alive and those yet unborn will die from related illnesses physical and mental. 7 years homeless? Fin. El gobierno de los Estados Unidos permite que mentirosos, racistas, degenerados con enfermedades mentales y criminales roben, violen y sacuin. court-appointed monitor of the single adult shelter system and the city-appointed monitor of the family shelter system. So we've done a lot of work over the past year, including over 150 unscheduled visits to shelters around the city, uh, joint inspections of single adult shelters and family shelters. And the three common issues that we encounter are large-scale capital needs, so roofs falling apart, um, heating needing to be fixed, elevators not working. Uh, routine cleaning and maintenance is a huge issue on nights and weekends. We see bathrooms in filthy conditions, particularly during the night, particularly over the weekends, where residents sometimes try to resort to cleaning themselves without the proper supplies. Um, and continuing complaints by dehumanizing treatment by staff. And all of this sort of uh, goes to say that the, the conditions and the culture within the shelter system is still problematic and still needs a lot of work in order to uh, become more humane and responsive to people's needs. The BRC staff and security routinely abuse both mentally and physically the formerly homeless residents who live at this facility. This includes using the residents themselves to engage in physical and mental violence. This includes harassment, verbal discrimination, rape, and theft of property, valuables, and money. Many of the staff and security who work at the BRC facility are also drug addicts who consume cannabis, alcohol, and other contaminants from food, water, and beverage, which impair their thinking. They are being allowed to work at a facility which is being used as a criminal organization under the banner of LBTGQR rights, BLM, and Stop Asian Hate. The NYPD, the mayor's office, and the governor's office have all been informed of the violence that goes on here. They are under security. There are surveillance cameras and the surveillance is not used to punish and prosecute the employees of this facility or the residents of this facility. Good afternoon, this is Investigator Baron Nevis of the New York State Police. This message is for Richard and Flores. I would like to speak with you about your uh, allegations that you said to our young man's office. Please call us back at 917. Good afternoon, Mr. Flores. My name is Mr. 
I had a good time with you. You're stuck. So.